Hi everyone, I'm Kishara Chisholm and welcome back to my channel, Kishara Creates. If this is your first time with me, I am an artist and instructor. And today I actually am going to paint a piece that is actually um, already purchased. I'm doing a custom commission piece today. And I thought that it would be nice just to walk you guys through the journey with me and just have some fun and create something nice and pretty beautiful, whatever you want to call it. So this painting is going to be pretty feminine. Um, if you've already been here with me, then you know I love flowers and plants and things of that nature. And I was um, commissioned for this piece to do exactly that. So that's exactly what I'm going to give them. And as usual, we are going to get started with the background. Now, she requested that this was piece was on a gray and kind of pink scale. So even though I'm doing flowers, um, it's going to be a little whimsical because I'm going to do the background in grays and a touch of blue. So it's not going to be a traditional sky color. And I'm going to mix in some grays and some pinks um, into the flowers as well. So it's going to be just a little bit different. But first, we're going to go ahead and get started with the background. So I like to use a two inch flat brush, especially when it comes down to doing the background. Um, if this is your second or third time back with me, then you know, I pretty much try not to be too fussy about the background because I know we're going to paint over top of it. I just want to get a nice base coat. So right now, I'm just doing some strokes of white paint because even though I want this to be a gray scale and we're going to have gray tones, I still don't want it to be too dark. So I'm just adding some white paint. So I'm actually going to go ahead and start going left to right and spreading that out some. Before I even put any other color on there, I'm just going to go ahead and spread that out. And even though it's white paint, you guys still get the corners, still get the corners. And the top, even though it's white paint, you still want to paint the sides. Like always, I make a big deal about painting the sides because you don't want to have to go back and do it later. It's just something I have learned through experience to just go ahead and get it out the way while you're doing the background. At least that way, um, if you don't touch it up while you're painting, it already has a coat on there. It just makes it look a little bit more professional. So I want to add a touch of blue. So I'm going to use some of my Brilliant Blue, but as you can see, I just have a little teeny tiny bit on my brush. And I'm going to use that same brush, the one inch, I mean, excuse me, the two inch flat brush. And as you can see, I didn't wipe it off or anything or clean it at all. I'm just going right into it with the white. And I'm going to add a little bit of like a, a turquoise as well. So I want the background to be darker at the top and gradually get lighter. So I'm going to put the blue in the middle. And as you can see, both of those colors, since I have them both on the brush, it's already kind of blending nicely together. I'm gonna take it all the way down to the bottom because I want touches of that blue everywhere. So I'm gonna get just a little bit of water on my brush, not too much, but just to help me spread some of this out some. There we go. Don't forget the top. Now, I'm gonna take a touch of black, just a little teeny tiny bit, cause black is very opaque, very overpowering. So we're just gonna do little touches of black here and there. And I'm actually going to dilute the brush again. I don't want the the brush dripping with water, but I want it pretty saturated with water. And I'm going to start blending it out. Get the sides and the corners too as you go along. 
And the important um, thing is that you want nice, smooth, even strokes. Sometimes you might have to go back and add a little bit more paint here or there. That's okay. You just want to make sure the canvas is fully saturated, that you don't see any um, bits and pieces of the canvas poking out through the background color. So you want to get a nice, thick, solid, smooth coat for the background. So, add some more paint on the sides. And as you can see, still not cleaning off the brush, just going in with the paint that's already on the brush. And I'm gonna add some more white to this because I want this a little bit more diluted. I'm gonna put some of that white in the middle and then start to blend it down. All right, and acrylic dries pretty fast. So especially when it comes down to the background, I pretty much try to get it done quickly. And it's got just a touch of gray, but I think I'm gonna add a little bit more gray to it to give it more of a gray scale. I still want it to be slightly blue because I still want it to look like a sky in the background, but I want it to have some gray tones to it. All right. Add some more water to my brush. Still just blending it out, making sure every little piece of the canvas is smooth and completely saturated with the background color. Step back and take a look at it for a second. Okay, I'm liking that. I like how soft the blue is, but I do want to add another just a little teeny tiny touch of some more gray. So I'm just going on with a little bit of white and black on that same brush, and I'm going to go in in the middle right here and blend it down some more just to give it a little bit more of a gray tone. And now this is not the exciting part, but it is very important, trust me. You'll thank me later, because that way when you go back and paint your flowers and everything over top of it, um, since the background is already fully saturated, you won't have to do as many coats of um, your layers when it comes to painting everything else on top of it since you went ahead and did your background. Now, um, when I'm doing more complex paintings, um, I have the tendency of drawing them out first. That way, um, I know that the detail or the image is gonna be the exact same way as I sketched it out. But for something like this, flowers and things of that nature, I kind of like to just play around with it and have fun. So um, these flowers are going to be kind of more so on a soft pink um, tone, but I'm actually going to sketch them out um, in a darker or a brighter pink tone. That way, you always want to start with your darts first. Um, the only exception typically for me is black, but I'm going to sketch these out in a darker pink. That way I can go in and start doing the shadows with the darker pink and adding the lighter tones over top of it. It will kind of just help speed up the process in regards to making this piece. So,
I'm actually going to sketch this out with a really thin liner brush or a smaller round brush. Let me see. I've got two different ones. I don't want to use the smallest one. Yeah, I'll use this one. So I'm going to use just a little bit of magenta and some red and some white. And it's not gonna be a really, really dark tone, but these flowers are gonna be pretty light. So it's gonna be dark enough to differentiate um, the petals and all that good stuff to add the detail to it. So instead of starting with really complex shapes and drawing everything out and things of that nature, I'm gonna start with what looks like some circles and shapes along those lines. So I want a really big flower kind of right here. And you've probably learned by now that I do like to paint on a larger scale. Um, my style is a little bit more whimsical, a little bit more fun, not as much realistic. Um, I typically draw more so realistically than when it comes to painting. But today we're just going to have some fun with this piece. So I want a larger flower here and one here and maybe some behind them. And I want some bulbs too, I don't want, or some buds also, I don't want just plain flowers. So with my liner brush, I'm going to just lay out the areas that I want. So this flower is going to be this size. So I'm just making an oval or circle there, just so you know that's where I want that flower to be and especially since this is a piece that's commissioned for someone I'm going to make sure that I take my paint all the way to the sides of the canvas it just makes it look more professional all right so I'm going to do another bigger one up here And mind you, it's okay if yours aren't in the same exact spots as mine or anything like that. It's all just about technique. It's not about trying to replicate mine or make it look exactly like mine. Um, the beautiful thing of about art is that you want it to be your own creation. So, or your own version, your own variation. I love the fact that I can instruct a class and things of that nature and everybody's painting even though they all come out equally beautiful they're all different that's the great thing about it is how people interpret the same exact thing all right so i'm going to add another little circle right here because i want a fairly large flower there as well And I'm going to add another one here. Now, I don't want just flowers. Of course, like I said, I wanted to do some buds and things of that nature. So I'm going to clean off that brush. And I'm going to make a pale green and kind of start laying out where I want the petal, I mean, excuse me, the stems to go. And then I'll play around with the composition and do the bulbs and all that good stuff and see if I want to add um, another flower here or there or make here or there or make any of them larger. So I'm going to take a little bit of green. I'm going to add some brilliant blue to it. Mm, a little bit of white. Might add a little touch of brown to it too to kind of deepen it up some. There we go. All right, so I think I'm going to start with this one. So I'm just going to kind of do 
a U and a line for my stem. And I'm curving the stem. I don't want it to be straight. So this stem, I'm going to take all the way down to the bottom of the canvas. But as you can see, that one's curved as well. This one, I think I'm going to curve going this way. So before I add any leaves or anything like that, like I said, I want some flower buds as well. So I'm going to start laying out um, some smaller circles for those also. So I kind of want to do one here overlapping um, this stem. And it's okay if it's not a perfect circle. You can always go back and touch it up. Right now, we're just getting down where we want the shapes to be. All right. So, I think I want to do one here also. And I don't want this picture to be too, too busy. I still want um, a lot of this background to come through some. And I think I might add one here too. I kind of like the composition of them going around this way. And I like the fact that there are different sizes too. I want this one behind them, these two behind. So I did not take the circle all the way into the pink. All right. So on this one, I'm going to make two little arches coming off the side and then I'm going to close them in and then right here I'm going to kind of mimic that same shape let's see let's see I want to do a petal coming out from this guy And I think I want a petal overlapping from this one, kind of filling in some of that space right here. So I'm going to start to place it over here. And you don't want them all to be the same size. Don't worry about it being too particular. Right now we're kind of just sketching it out and then all the fun stuff will begin. So I'm going to add a leaf here and I think I'm going to add one here as well. One connected to this bulb right here. All right, I think I'm going to leave that. Let me step back for a second. All right, I think I like that composition. There's a good amount of area cover. There's not too much negative space, just enough. So since I'm already using the green, I guess I'll just go ahead and start um, the detail for my um, buds. So I'm going to start with a circle in the middle. And like I said, right now we're just sketching it out. So don't worry about it being too perfect or anything right now. Right now we just have some circles, some leaves, and now a dot in the middle of the green circles. <laughs> so we're still using that very small liner brush. Um, you do want your paint to be kind of thin because we are actually drawing with this. So what I'm going to do is I like to start with one arch line on each side and then I kind of split them in half and I'm going to do that same thing all the way around and right now I might not give you that look but we're going to keep adding to it 
until it does. And see, I'm kind of just doing a curved line all the way around. It's okay if you touch into some of the pink areas because that's going to get covered up. All right, I think I might just leave the green as it is for right now. Mm, no, I take that back. I'm going to define this a little bit more before. No, I'm going to do the flowers first, and then I'm going to go back and define the bolts, especially since these right here are going to be over top of those two bolts. So... I'm going to use that same brush, my small liner brush, to lay out the petals for the flowers too. Now, I'm going to do the same pink that I used to go ahead and sketch out the little circles where we want the shape to go. I think I'm going to start with this one, and I want this one, the middle, to kind of start right here and then the petals coming out. So... I'm going to do what looks like some U shapes and then I'm going to do some smaller ones right over top. Kind of bring those down to the side so they look like they're coming around and then I'm going to make some arching down the other way. All right, then we're going to start making some petals coming out of that. So we're going to start with smaller petals and then make them larger. And I promise drawing this piece out is going to be the longest part of this painting. So now the ones behind them, see, I'm going to make these a little bit larger. And I'm not doing, I'm not trying to make all the petals the same size or anything like that. I'm just getting down the basic silhouette. And I don't want them all in the same exact place either. I want them kind of overlapping each other. Or some behind some, some in front of the other ones. So make these a little bit larger. All right, so we're just going to keep going until the whole silhouette is filled up. And we're going to do the petals over top of this line. We don't want to have just a plain circle or oval. So keep going. We're not doing too bad, kind of 20 minutes into it, and believe it or not, you're further along than you probably think you are. Yeah. 
Remember to take it up to the sides and the top of your canvas too. And there's going to be multiple layers. So like I said, don't try to put all the petals in the same spot. It actually makes it look more realistic and more interesting to have them kind of here and there instead of all exactly the same. And see, I'm going over that line that we originally sketched for the where the flowers were going to be. So still just adding petals, adding petals, adding petals. Nothing too complicated, too difficult. Anybody could do this. Very simple. And I might have to make a piece like this for me because I really like the colors that she chose. And it's fun doing flowers that have a little bit of touch of things that are not as so traditional. So I like the fact that she wants gray incorporated in this. I think that's going to be come out really cool. So I'm going to add a little bit more water to my brush so I can dilute this pink some more. So we can go ahead and start with the rest of the flowers so i'm going to start with this one and i want the middle of it to kind of just be you know in the middle of the flower so i'm going to do what almost looks like little bunny ears or little loops and just like we did with this one i'm going to do some coming from underneath it as well and then i'm going to start doing those petal shapes around it smaller and then starting to get larger and i'm making sure i'm making each layer a little bit larger and i'm having them come out of each other instead of following them perfectly i want them to overlap each other. I'm just laying out the petals, nothing too complicated, just adding some shape and definition to the areas that we've already dedicated to where our flowers are going to go. I'm just adding them here and there. I'm not making any certain amount of layers or anything like that. I'm just adding petals, filling it in. Just keep adding petals. I promise this will probably take the longest amount of time just drawing it out but you gotta have your composition right trust me it's a lot easier to go ahead and start doing these little details now instead of just trying to throw the color on and trying to do the colors or excuse me the definition at the end or all the little details at the end Still just adding, like I've mentioned before, don't forget the sides, especially when your flowers or things of that nature come off to the side. 
bring it down to the sides too. There we go. All right, let me start making them a good bit larger. Mixing up just a little bit more of that color, just so we can finish sketching everything out. And see, I didn't go ahead and do too many details to these flower buds right here because these leaves, or petals, excuse me, are going to go over top of them. We're going to kind of overlap. And I would have been mad at myself if I would have went and added too much detail just to go back and cover it up. So, I think I'm pretty happy with the shape of that flower. Let me step back and just take a look at it because I have not done that. Okay. All right. Let's keep it going. Now I'm going to do this one because this one's going to most likely come over this flower a little bit and this one's a little different of a shape so we're going to do that one at the, la at the last and I'll probably make the petals for this one a little bit darker especially since it's going to be in the background and these two are going to come in front of it. So I'm going to do this one in the middle too. So I'm going to start with those little loops at the top. And then I'm going to do the same thing coming around the bottom of it. And then I'm going to start doing those little petals coming out from that center of the flower. Y'all probably got this down packed by now, but we're just adding petals, putting them behind each other, having them get larger. Don't forget the size of your canvas. Take your petals to the sides. If it's too hard for you to actually sketch with the paintbrush, then you probably need to add some more water to your brush. Either that or dilute your paint some. Now, I'm just excited that this, um, this painting is going to be, even though right now it looks like it's more so traditional colors, I am going to add a good amount of grays to these flowers. And typically I start um, with the darks first, but I'm going to do this one slightly different. I'm going to start with the dark pink and then add my lighter shades over top of it and then go back and add definition with the grays because I don't want the gray to overpower the painting too much. And most likely instead of doing um, white at the tips of the flowers, I'll most likely do a pale gray since we're doing it on a gray scale. I 
just have to mix up just a little bit more. Just keep adding my petals. You want to keep adding layers until you cover up that original line that you use to lay out where you want your flowers to go. And I'm going to do some larger petals coming out of that. Still just adding petals. We're almost done with the petals. Then we can start doing the definition to the stems and the buds, and then we can start having fun and throwing some color in there. Let me step back from that for a second. Okay. Now, for this one, I'm going to do it just a little bit darker. So I'm going to add some purple to that tone that I mixed up to outline the blue. I mean, excuse me, to outline the pink flowers and make it just a little bit darker or brighter for these guys. And right here, I'm going to start a little line because these petals are going to come up this way. And I'm kind of just doing quick little shapes. Remember this one's going behind these two so you don't want these darker shades to overlap and i'm gonna start doing some coming up the other way too i'm gonna do a little line right there make some little smaller ones and then continue to bring them up and as you can see i'm not being too picky i'm just laying out the silhouette Let me step back and look at it. All right. Now, I'm going to make um, a darker green to start these bulbs. And so I'm just going to use my green. I'm going to add a touch of red, literally a teeny tiny bit of red. You can always add more red to it if you want to deepen it up and make it a little bit darker. Um, it's easy to darken the color. It's a lot harder to lighten it up. So I'm just making a darker green, not too dark, but dark enough to go over top of this and to sketch out the detail. So I'm going to start with this one right here at the bottom. So right in the middle, let me dilute that paint just a little bit more, not to where the paint is running, but just to where you can sketch with it, almost like ink. So I'm going to start with a little dot in the middle. I'm going to cover up the lines that I made, and then I'm actually going to arch that line at the bottom. That's going to give it the appearance of it being round. And see, not too complicated. It's, it's interesting how little teeny tiny things like that can just change the composition or the look or feel of an image. Just from little simple things like that.
see, you don't want it to be smooth circles. You want them to kind of arch. Let's see how that makes it look a little bit more realistic. It almost looks like a pumpkin, <laughs> a green one. But we're gonna do that same thing for these where the pink overlaps, the bulbs, don't worry about that because we do want the petals to overlap. So we're gonna do the same thing, start in the middle, cover up those lines and round it out. They almost look like little teardrops, almost. Do the same thing here with this one. Follow the lines, then curve it at the bottom. Follow the lines, curve it at the bottom. Don't forget the corners are the size of your canvas. All right, let me take a step back. Okay, I'm liking that. And I'm liking it, especially since this side has a lot going on. I like the contrast of it being a lot um, more negative space on this side. So, since I want this stem to come over top, of these leaves, I'm going to darken that up too. And I'm not being too picky. I'm just darkening that stem, that's all. Just so it's clear that it's going over top of those leaves. I'm gonna cover up my little shapes in here too. Just make them a little bit richer. Just touching up the stems and the leaves. That's all, nothing fancy. And then we'll start layering out the colors and getting started with the fun stuff. The hard part is out the way. I'm just kind of overlapping that initial green sketch that we laid out. I'm not following the lines completely, but just kind of making it stand out, adding a little bit more color to it. take a step back okay I'm liking that so far all right now that kind of magenta well no I'm still gonna do it with this color like I originally said so I'm gonna take um, that original pink that I used Gonna mix up some more. It was just a little bit of magenta, um, some white, some purple, and a little bit of brilliant red. If you make it too pale, just add more magenta, more red to it. That would brighten it up some if you add too much white to it. Let me 
that's the color all right and i just love a round brush i usually use a larger one but today especially since these are teeny tiny petals and they're kind of close together we're going to stick with this small brush and basically all of these little lines are going to mostly get covered up we're just going to start adding some shadows to it so we can start with the layers so i'm going to start in the middle and i'm just going to kind of add some darker tones right in there and i want it to be deeper in the middle of the petals so we're just touching the bottoms of the petals adding some color to it we're leaving the top of them just outlined or just plain And just where the petals touch each other at the bottom, I'm just adding a little bit of that same pink that we used to outline it. And just doing little strokes going up. Nothing too particular, just adding some shadow right there. Deepening it up right there so when the petals start to overlap of them, they'll have shadows and highlights. And just where they overlap, add a little bit of color. Nothing too complicated, just doing a little strokes here and there at the base of those little flower petals. Just right at the base of the little petals. Just add some shadow to it. And painting is all about layers. So we're gonna do this same layer all the way around and then we're gonna come back um, probably to the bulbs and do some layers and then come back to the flower. So we're just adding some at the middles or at the tip, the base, whatever you want to call it, of each one of the petals. Nothing too fancy. And we're going to go back at the very end and define all of the petals with some of the grays that I was speaking of. So don't worry about it being too picky. The important thing is that we laid out the shapes and we can always go back and define those later. So. And see, I'm just touching here and there at the bottom of them. Nothing too fancy or particular. I'm gonna do the same thing with these two. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with this one, but with that darker tone the same tone that we use to sketch it out. And I like to start in the middle. That way it just makes me remember, helps me to remember, did I do this one, did I do that one? Especially when they're all really close together like this. And as you can see, I'm legitimately just adding some color to the bottom of all of those petals. Nothing too particular. It wouldn't even have taken me this long if I wasn't talking. Just at the base or the bottom of each little flower petal.
then I'm not even being picky about the type of line or that I use. In some areas, you probably notice I did little dots like this. Some of them I'm doing little strokes. It doesn't matter. We just want some of that shade everywhere at the base of each little petal. And as you can tell, that did not take long at all because I was not talking as much. <laughs> so let's go ahead and keep that going. And since we already have this color on our brush, we'll do this one, then we'll do that and we'll start with some of the greens. Do exactly like I've been saying, start in the middle, work my way out. Just touching the base of the petals. That's it. It's okay if you touch up some of those lines. We've already sketched those flowers once, so we can definitely go back and over lap them or to touch up little areas give them more definition at the end right now we're just starting to add shadows so we can make this look a lot more realistic and give it more texture and dimension and definition and all those things And I'm just doing a little here and there. I'm not trying to make them all the same. I'm not adding the same amount of paint anywhere, nothing like that. Just keep adding that same color to the base of each one of the little petals. And see, it doesn't really take too, too long. When we start to blend in the other colors into it, it won't have to be as particular about it. But right now you want to just make sure that you don't lose all of those petals, which is why we're only putting that pink at the base of each little petal. We're leaving the tops the same color as they were. I'm going to add one petal right here. All right, just doing the same thing. Making it deeper at the base, adding more color right there so it's darker. Because that's where our shadow is naturally going to fall. It's always darker in the middle of the flower and gets lighter or brighter at the tips. All right, I think I got most of them. If not, it at least looks like it, so... Let's start with this guy. And let me get some more magenta paint. Let's see. There we go. Still with that same brush, a little bit of magenta, a little bit of purple, and a touch of white. Might add some red to it. Close enough. Yep. All right. And we're just doing the same thing right at the base of each little petal. Add some of that shade. And I'm going to start speeding it up because we should have a good feel for what we're doing by now. All right, all right. And 
And remember, these are not going to be the deepest tones that we have. We're going to go back with some grays at the very end. Just adding shadows at the base of each little petal. Okay, great. All of those are done. Perfect. So for these, I want to have a base of a really pale or pastel um, green. And I'm actually going to switch to my larger round brush, which is usually the brush that I use the majority of the time. But I'm going to take some of the base green and a little touch of turquoise, a little bit of yellow and some white. And I want a really pale pastel green almost like a mint green, maybe a little bit lighter. I always get paint all over me. I guess that's part of the process. Okay, I'm liking this green that I just mixed up. I'm just kind of smoothing out the paint on my brush. Thinning out the paint some so it paints smoothly. So I'm just gonna paint into those areas it's okay if you cover up that dark green just a little bit no big deal like i always say we're going to go back and add more definition and layers over top of this anyway we're just putting down the base coat see it's already starting to go a lot faster the fun is about to start These guys also. If you're having a hard time getting into little tight areas, then use a smaller brush. A lot of times people, I don't know why people think or feel like they need to use the same brush the entire time, but you do not. It's a good idea to have larger brushes and smaller brushes for certain areas. So we're going to do this guy and we're going to add the same tone to fill in all the leaves too. See, that didn't take too long. We're just filling in with that lighter green. Like I said, if you touch up some, oh, excuse me, if you accidentally cover up some of that dark green, that's okay. You can always, at the end, go back and define everything. We're gonna do that anyway. Make sure that your paint, your strokes are smooth. All right, let me take a step back. Let's see. Okay, I'm starting to like that. So for these pink flowers, I'm going to go in Lord, I probably got paint in my hair now. Who knows? 
um, I'm going to go in with a really pale pink or a lighter pink and then we'll do an either lighter pink or white over top of that which is why I said it doesn't matter too much about these lines we just want the petals to be able to stand out so I am going to stick with that smaller round brush when it comes to inside of the petals because they're so close together that way I don't over go over top of the lines and lose the shape and the definition that we've already done. So I am going to make a pretty pale pink. Not too pale because we're going to do another pale pink over top of this one. And we're just going to kind of touch into the areas where we put that shadow. Kind of start building this color into the middle of each one of the little petals. And like I said, they don't need to be perfect because we're just going to keep adding color and definition to this. Just want to add some of this lighter pink to the middle of each one of these petals. You can see I'm just kind of throwing the color in the middle. I'm not being too particular. If it touches the tip of the flowers, that's okay. That's why we outlined them. We're going to go back and define all of that anyway. Most important thing, put some of this color in each one of the petals. That's just the most important thing. You don't want to just go over top of that darker shade you want to kind of blend into it and paint into the middle of the petals if any of your petals start to blend together it's okay like i keep saying we're going to go back and add more definition anyway and define this some more Painting is all about layering. It's about layering, layering, layering the paint. All right, and we're basically going to do the same thing up here. So as you can see, this part doesn't, doesn't go as long as sketching everything out. Like I said, I promised that was the hardest, most time consuming part. But people always say, oh, I can't draw, I can't draw. And see, it really isn't that complicated. Painting is very forgiving. If you mess up or make a mistake, it takes five minutes for it to dry and you can try it again and paint right over top of it. And I'm just adding little touches of the color into each one of the petals. All right. I think all of those petals have a little bit of that light pink. Wow, that's already changing the entire composition and looks of the painting. I feel like all of these have a little touch. All right. I'm going to move on to these guys. I'm move a little bit quicker. See, just a little touch of pink here and there and in the middle, not being too particular. I'm legitimately 
just throwing some pink, dabbing it into the middle of each one of these petals. All right, let's do this guy. And we'll actually use the pink that we did to outline these flowers to fill in this one in here. Cause like I said, this one's gonna be a little bit darker than the rest of the flowers. So let's go ahead and with that same lighter pink, do this guy. And just like I said, just in the middle of the petals, add some of this light pink. You don't have to be too particular. Don't worry if you cover up any of that shadow color that you just put down because we are going to just blend and go right over top of all of that stuff anyway. So I'm literally just making sure that each one of the petals have some of that lighter pink in the middle of each one. And see how that's already starting to separate those petals it makes it easier for you to see them where the little lighter areas are you want to keep adding this lighter pink into it Just throwing it in the middle, not worrying if I cover up some of those shadows that I threw down. It was more so just the base coat. Just putting down the pink, nothing fancy. Still just add in the pink. All right. Do that same thing in this one, but I'm gonna use the pink that I did to outline these guys. Clean my brush off some. literally doing the same thing just dabbing into it with that lighter tone dabbing into the petals nothing complicated about it just add in some of that color to each one of the petals Just add in some pink into the middle of this one. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead on these and start adding in the white too, because then we can have a, then we can really have fun and start to play around with the petals. So I'm just gonna do the same thing with all of these. I'm gonna focus the white more so on the tips. And I'm not even going to clean off the brush. I'm still going to use um, that same paintbrush that already had the pink in it, just to make a really pale pink. 
I don't want it to be just white. I will still want it to have a tint of color to it. You know what? I might add. And then I still add some more white. Come on, paint. There we go. I'm going to dilute that pink a good amount with that white. I want a really pale pink. See, really, really pale. Almost looks white, but it's not. And at the top of each flower, I'm going to start, or each petal, I'm going to add that white. Now, I'm not covering up those darker tones because I still want the flowers petals to, so you can tell the difference between them. So like I said, we're going to go back and we're going to start, we're going to add our gray tones to shadow and then we're going to pretty much finish up these flowers. But first, let's put some of this light pink at the tips of each one of these little flower petals. Now, we're still going to do the same thing with this one, but we're going to make the pink a little bit um, darker, just a tad bit. Not even necessarily darker, but more so richer or deeper, whatever you want to call it. See, nothing fancy. Just adding some really pale pink to the tips. You could also use white if you wanted to, but white would make it a little bit more dramatic, more contrast. I chose to use a light pink because I have the tendency to go back and do some shadowing and detail with the white at the end. So just right at the tips of the petals, Adding that really light pink. take a step back oh wow I'm already really starting to like that okay do the same thing for this guy just at the tips of each one of the petals Still nothing fancy, just add in some of that light pink to the tips of each one of the petals. That way, each one of the petals basically has three color variations already kind of blended into it. 
They've got the deeper shade that we use to outline it. We've got a lighter pink into the middle of it and a really pale pastel pink at the tips of each one of the petals. And it's okay if each one's not colored or filled in perfectly, we're still gonna go back and add more definition and detail. So you just want the tips of the petals to have that really pale pastel pink in it at the tips. do this guy over here too and then we'll make just a little teeny tiny bit of a darker one to do for this one since this flower is a little bit darker so literally the same thing just filling it in Add in some light pink at the tips of each one of these. Don't forget if you drew anything on the sides, if any of your petals overlap on the sides, don't forget the size of your canvas. All right, let me take a step back again. Okay. Doing the same thing, just at the tip. This is a little bit of a darker shade, just because this flower right here is a little bit darker. I wanted it to be a little bit darker just because it's, to give the impression that it's behind these two. So just adding that brighter tone at the tops and this is going to help when we go back to define your petals because wherever there's a little bit of light at you know that that's where the tip of a petal is Let me take a step back. Oh, it's starting to look good. All right. And I think I'm going to play around and add some more light greens to this over here. Look, I didn't even realize I didn't fill in right there. Then I'm going to come into these and start with some of the grays. And then I'm going to start to blend out those flowers some more. First. Let me actually paint this petal. Oh, not petal, excuse me, leaf, whatever. You know what I'm talking about by now.
All right. So I'm going to make a lighter version of that green as well. A more pale version of that green. dilute it some so it's more like an ink kind of consistency because I want to almost draw with it and I'm still using my fine round liner brush all right and right here in the middle I'm going to start doing some little lines coming out I want them to curve with the curve, with the curvature or with the shape of the inside of each one of the sections of the flower buds. It's okay if your lines aren't perfect, if they're not all the same thickness or whatever. The thinner your paint is, the smaller or more detailed you can get your lines. However, you do not want your paint so thin that it's running down the canvas. Just adding little touches here or there. Okay, let me step back like I always do. I'm gonna take that larger round brush again that I had. And I'm gonna take some of that same green and add a little bit on either side of each one of those leaves. Don't forget up in here too. I'm gonna kind of touch each little area with some of that green. Forget this petal. Let me do a little bit on the stem too. Just here and there. Not covering the whole line, just little spots here and there. All right. So we're doing a lot with our little round brush today, but I think I want one a little bit bigger. Look, let me use what I got instead of going through all my paint brushes. I'm trying to pull them all out or whatever. All right, so I'm actually going to go ahead and mix up a in-between kind of gray, not too light, not too dark. And I'm going to start adding definition at the base or the corners of each one of the little petals. So I'm going to start with a little tiny like scoop of black. And I'm going to gradually add more white to it until I get it to a tone that I like. I don't want to just go in and start adding too much white because then I can get it way lighter than I want it to be. So I'm doing a kind of medium tone gray and I'm going to dilute this some because I want the lines to be pretty crisp. So I'm not going to go all around each little petal but I am going to on the sides of them kind of fill them in with some of that gray. So I'm gonna kind of do a line on the side and kind of blend it in. 
It doesn't have to be perfect because like I said, all of this is going to be about layers and blending into each other. It's, you want your paint to be kind of thin too. Not too thin to where the paint is running, but thin enough to where you can easily move it around and manipulate it like this. You see how I'm throwing the paint down and kind of sketching or scratching with it? That will make your definition go a lot quicker than if your paint's too thin. I mean, excuse me, too thick. And that's basically the technique that I'm going to do on all of these guys. Even this one up in here, I'm going to use that same gray. I'm not mixing up another gray. This is just aiding in the shadows. So I'm putting it on to the sides, one side of each petal and blending it out. See, I'm just kind of scooping on the sides and then kind of doing little lines or pushing it out. Just adding gray, nothing fancy. The same thing that we've been doing. Basically, touching into some of those original outlines that we use for the flowers. You don't want your gray too thick because you don't want to overpower. The pink tones that we put down. Let me step back some. Okay, I'm starting to like that. Like I said, it's all about layers. Just kind of scraping some gray into each one of the sides of each one of these little petals. Kind of touching the bottom and moving up to the sides of it. To the base of the petal and then to the sides. Dilute that gray just a little bit more. All right, and of course, like I keep saying, let me look. Do the same thing for these guys.
and it's okay if you don't follow the shapes all the way because we are still going to go back and define 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 at the end right now it's about building up the colors and the layers Just a little touch of gray on each little one. And this is what I was excited about for this flower because I thought it'd just be neat to add some grays into it. That's not a color scheme that I typically do. So I was excited that she requested that. All right, let me look again. Same thing, just adding a touch of gray to the sides of each one of these petals. You don't want them all the same. You want them all different. Just still adding gray, nothing too exciting. And see, this is a very simple painting. It's literally just about adding color, layering color, not being too precise with technique or how you lay out the color. Just making sure that each one of the petals stands out some from the other. Now I'm going to focus on the leaves and the stems last, um, just because I'm going to kind of blend those while they're still wet, wet on wet. So we can do that at the end. All right, almost done with the gray. As you can see, still not being too particular, not following any particular line or anything like that. Just throwing down some of that shade in each little area that helped the petals to stand out some. And it's a good thing that they're not all the exact same. You don't want them to all be the exact same. I'm going to add some gray in these also, like I said, more so just coming off the side of them. Still just working with the gray. Just doing 
doing the same old thing. I'm going to add some gray tones in here too. That same gray at the bottom down here. I kind of want to come up the sides too. I'm just putting a line down at the bottom and kind of blending it up. And you do want it to kind of come up into the middle of that flower bud too some. And I'm not doing straight lines. I'm kind of doing curves to follow the angle or the shape that was already put down. coming down some too. All right, start at the bottom, kind of blend it up. You don't want too much paint on your brush, just enough to add some shadow to it and a little at the top of each one too. Go a little deeper at the top, too. All right, let's see. All right, up in here, also, since this one's coming this way, I'm going to kind of angle some right down in the middle of these little areas. Add some of these grays on the sides of the leaves also. And I know I said I was going to do all this detail at the end, but hey, I wanted to add some more gray to this. Because her room is gray and she... Gave me free range, but she definitely says she wants gray and pink and white in it. If you get too much paint on your brush, wipe your brush off and blend out what you already have in that area. 
And sometimes you can kind of wiggle your brush around like this to kind of soften up any areas that you feel like has too harsh of a line or too much paint in that one spot. So let's see. Deepen it up right here. And up in here also. I'm just gonna add a little bit of water on my brush and just kind of go over that line I just did. All right, let me step back again. Alright, so I'm going to take, I'm actually going to use my flat brush, I think now, a smaller flat brush. And that same very pale pink that I use, I'm going to add a little bit of magenta into it, just to brighten it up some. I'm going to dilute the paint because I don't want it to overpower or completely cover up all those layers that we put down. But I'm going to start I'm starting at the ends and kind of blending in all those different layers of color. And yes, you do want to blend into the whole petal. So cover up all of those lines that you did earlier. All of those outlines from when we sketched out the initial shape of the flower or petals. You don't have to cover it all up because you still want color peeking through, but we just want to make sure each petal is solid. Make sure your paint is pretty thin. You don't want, you want it thick enough to where it covers and there's not blue or the background peeking through certain areas, but you also don't want it so thick that it covers up all the detail of everything you already did. Just pretty much adding this pink over top of the petals. Blending it into the shades we already had down. And see, I'm gonna go a little bit faster because we don't have to be too particular. We're gonna go back and define this some. So go ahead and just keep it moving. It's okay if it covers up some of those areas a little bit. Dilute my brush again.
and I'm kind of doing little scoop shapes or curve shapes when it comes to filling in these little areas. I don't want it to just be round globs of paint that I'm putting into the silhouette for each one of these petals. I want it to kind of be curved to give that illusion of a rounded shape. See, just adding little curves to it, kind of fin filling it in. You get if you feel like you got it too thick in one area wipe your brush out and then thin it out with some water let me step back and see oh yeah that's starting to look good and you see how all those other little layers are starting to peek and poke out in between them that's exactly what we want And you have to be mindful, especially when you're using lighter colors. Um, white paint is very opaque. So anytime you have to add white to a color, make sure that it is not too um, thick. Otherwise, it's completely going to cover up all your layers. None of that color variation is going to show through. So like you can see, I'm kind of just doing little curve shapes, little C and U shapes all over this guy. Just adding a little of that pink, blending it into everything that we just did. Don't forget the sides like I keep saying. I keep saying that to remind my own self to not forget the sides because I have a habit of doing that. I have a habit of forgetting to sign my paintings too, which is not good. You can't be an artist and forget to sign, sign your work. but I forget all the time. I have to go back and sign it. Okay. I'm gonna add some touches in here too, cause this is a little bit lighter. Now we're gonna do this one. Believe it or not, we're getting close to being done, I promise. And do these petals, add a little bit more definition in them and add a little bit more love to these guys and we're done. Diluted some. Still just doing a little curved kind of strokes, kind of just mimicking what you would think of when you think of a shape of a petal. And I am going over top of some of those 
outlines. I kind of just want to start blending in the colors. Make sure you get some of that shade everywhere. Bring it out some more. Step back from it. Oh yeah, I'm liking that. All right. Make more of a pale magenta for right there. Make sure this is lighter than that color I already put down. Nope, I want to lighten it just a little bit more. There we go. All right, I like that color, but let's go ahead and dilute it some. And see how I'm doing those little curved motions just around each one of the petals. If your brush starts to get dry, add more paint to it. Be mindful that your paint's not too thick. You don't want it to cover up all the detail. You want it to add into what you just did. Going back and little any little areas where I still see blue poking through, I'm kind of touching up with that tone. And I step back again. Okay. All right, so I'm going to play around with these guys and then I'm going to add the last little shadows. Well, excuse me, I'll do the highlights and I'll do the shadows and then I'll be done. I think I'm going to stick with this flat brush though. And I'm going to mix a lighter gray. I'm just going to kind of blend into the areas where I already added that darker gray on the petals. If I get too much, wipe my brush off, blend what I got out. All right, I'm going to dilute this really light gray a good amount. See, the paint's not dripping, but it's pretty close. It's really thin. And I'm going to add just some kind of quick, short lines, curved lines in the middle right there to aid in that appearance of them 
being round. And do the same thing for the rest of them. Add some touch of gray to the stems. Some of that lighter gray up in here too. Now I'm going to use some pale yellow to brighten up some areas in there. And really I'm kind of just going to use that pale green that I have and mix it with some yellow. I wanted more yellow than green though, a little bit more white. Let's see, okay, I think I like that. Just some little touches, oh yeah, I like that. The same way we did those strokes with the light gray, we're gonna do with this kind of pale yellow. And see, I'm using the flat brush because I can use the wand to follow and make those curved shapes. I let the brush do the work for me. It makes it a little bit easier. Let me see. Okay. Do it here too. Little touches in here, into the petals, excuse me, into the leaves. Into the stems. I'm gonna stick with this smaller flat brush and I'm gonna go back into some of that darker green. Actually, I think I need to make some more, which means I need some more green paint. going to add a little bit of red into that just to deepen that green some. Add a little teeny touch of yellow to it so it won't get too too dark. There we go. And where the bottom, where we did the outline for the green, we're going to take some green there, kind of cover up that line and blend it up. But very gently, you don't want to cover up all that definition that you just added to this. Step that. Oh, yeah, I'm liking that. All right, touching the bottom of it and kind of blending up into it. Going around that line and blending into it.
go back with some of that lighter green again but mix it with some yellow to brighten it up and just go back over top of it with some lighter tones with those same strokes that we did This little guy too. Now a little bit more of the little touches of light gray into it. Same brush, still using that small flat brush. Still paint still pretty thin. I'm gonna mimic those same shapes just to give it a more curved appearance. 